வணக்கம் குட் மார்னிங் டுடே இஸ் த ஃபைனல் பார்ட் ஆஃப் யுத்த காண்டம் அண்ட் இட்ஸ் கால் மீட்சி படலம் திஸ் இஸ் ஆல்சோ த ஃபைனல் பார்ட் ஆஃப் ராமாயணம் இட் செல்ஃப் த வேர்ட் மீட்சி மீன்ஸ் டு சேஃப் இட் ஆல்சோ மீன்ஸ் டு ரெஸ்கியூ ஆக்சுவலி மோர் மோர் கரெக்ட்லி ஸோ திஸ் போர்ஷன் ஸ்பீக்ஸ் அபவுட் சேவிங் சீதா அண்ட் ரெஸ்கியூவிங் ஹர் ஃப்ரம் த ப்ரிசன் இன் அசோகவனம் there is also another person who is rescued in the michi padalam and that is bharatan following this rama is crowned as the emperor of ayodhya and this is described in the tiru mudi suttu padalam and then kamban concludes his epic with the vidai kodutha padalam where he bids goodbye to all his friends and allies the uttarakandam where rama banishes sita to the forest is absent in kamban's ramavadaram There are those who would argue that this was a later addition to Valmiki's Ramayanam and was not composed by the poet sage Valmiki but that is a topic for a, another day's discussion. We get back to the Meechi Padalam and the Meechi Padalam begins with Anuman going to meet Sita in the Ashokavanam. Rama asks Anuman to convey the joyous news of his victory over Ravana. Anuman says to Sita, Yelai Sobanam, Yendilai Sobanam, Vali Sobanam, Mangala Sobanam, Aadiyana Arakkanai, Aariya Chooriyanai, Thuvaitthadu Sobanam. Sobanam means Mangalam, it's an auspicious word. Anuman tells Sita that the Aryan ef- uh, elephant has defeated the evil Asura. When she hears this, Sita is overjoyed, so overjoyed that she becomes speechless. Anuman is waiting for her to say something and is puzzled by her silence. Finally she says I did not speak because I did not know what to say you have fulfilled every promise you made to me what can i give you in return anything that i give you will be a material object which will perish one day it will have a value but what you have given me is a priceless gift it's a it's a gift that is everlasting you have given me back rama there is nothing equal to that so the only way i can say thanks to you the only way i can express gratitude to you is by bowing my head before you ulagam moonru mudavarku oru thani vilai ilamai unninen melavai nilai ilamai ninaithanan ninnai en thalaiyinalum tholavum thagum tanmayoy this is sita's way of telling anuman that she is indebted to him forever for reuniting her with rama anuman with his characteristic humility says what could be greater than having been entrusted with the job of reuniting you with rama next rama sends vidanan to meet sita and to bring her to him to the battlefield itself there is some controversy with respect to this the exact words that rama used was sendrita nama deviye sirodum which uh, really means bring sita to me with the dignity and honor that is owed to her Uh, Sita belongs to a royal lineage and she is going to be the future queen of Kosala um, and it's not surprising that um, Vidan and thought that she should be really dressed up like a queen before she is brought in front of Rama this was a complete mis- misunderstanding Rama wanted Sita to be given the respect that was owed to her Vidan and thought Rama wanted Sita to be decked up in royal attire and brought before him like a queen the word seer means respect seer also means wealth so vidanan went to the ashokavanam and bowed before sita and said rama has asked me to escort you to the battlefield but before that you must be decked out like a queen sita said no she said no rama should see me like this the way i have been for the last 10 months wearing this one piece of cloth which is now dirty with grime my hair matted and in knots my face unkempt rama should see me like this the whole world should see me like this virtuous women everywhere should see me like this yan ivan irunda it tanmai imayavar soolavum engal konum am munivar thangal kootamum kulathukku yetra vaan uyar karpin maada reetamum kaandal maatchi mel nilai kolam kodal vidumiyadu anru veera she said seeing me like this will be a vindication of my penance will be a vindication of my chastity this appearance speaks for itself but vidanan insisted that sita be decked in royal garb he said this was rama's command 
So finally Sita agreed and she was bathed and bedecked by Ramba, Menaka and Urvashi, the Apsara women and she was brought like a queen to the battlefield in a palanquin. As the palanquin reached the battlefield, people rushed to get a glimpse of Sita. The soldiers who were guarding her tried to restrain the crowd. There was a big noise and uh, Rama came to see what was going on. When he saw what was happening, he was very angry with Vidanan. He said, these people have come to get a glimpse of Sita. They have come to see me and her together. They have come for our darshan. Why are you treating them so harshly? If this is the way you treat the devas, then how will the ordinary people be treated? So, Rama is now very angry and the palaquin reaches the battlefield. Sita's first thoughts when she saw the battlefield was again about Anuman. In her heart, she thanked him once more for having made this all possible. And then she saw Rama for the first time in 10 months. Kamban says, Pachilai vannamum pavala vayumai kaichilai yendi nindranai kannutral. Rama's skin is the color of the dark emerald. His lips are as red as coral and he is standing there bearing a beautiful bow. Sita saw this sight and she said to herself, now that I have see, seen him, I would not mind even if I were to die. Now I have been truly fulfilled. But Raman looked closely upon Sita and shockingly, Rama started to accuse her. He said, it looks like you have been living like a queen in the palace for the last 10 months. Untira muvandanai, udukkam palpada mandilai, murai tirambu arakkan managar, andu uraindu adanginai, acham tirindu even meenda the yenni naivu, yennai virumbum yenbado. You have been living like a queen in Ravana's palace. Why have you come here now? After having enjoyed yourself, have you come to introduce those pleasures to me? And then he went on and on. Penmayum, perumayum, pirappum, karpuyanum, tinmayum, urukkamum, telivum, sirmayum, unmayum, niyanum, murutti, tondralal. One mayil, one avan, pugadum, maindadal. He wounded her. He said, you have brought shame upon your family. You have brought shame upon yourself. You have disgraced virtuous women all over the world. He goes on and on and finally finish, he finishes off by saying, I did not come here to rescue you because I loved you and because I intend to live with you. I rescued you because if I had abandoned you, the world would have blamed me. I came here and fought Ravana to restore my good name. Now you take yourself out of my sight. Go away or go kill yourself. Rama said, go, get lost, die. When she heard this, Sita's grief was indescribable. She looked down in shame. Kamban said she looked down upon the earth who was her mother. And then she asked Rama one very poignant question. She said, did Anuman not tell you about my state as a prisoner in the Ashogavana? And she made it a point to refer to Anuman as Yarinum Menmayan, the best among equals. Marudi Vandi and Nai Kandu Vallalni, Sarudi Indi and a Samayat Solinan, Yarinum Menmayan, Isaita the Illayo, Sorum Yenilai, Amantu the Malano. Sita now actually is questioning the, um, the relationship between. Um, Rama and Anuman himself, because she knows that uh, Rama trusts Anuman. Anuman very clearly told Rama what was happening in Ashokavanam. When he came back to tell Rama that he's found uh, Sita, he used the word Kandanan Karpinik Aniyai Kangalal. He didn't say, I found Sita. He said that I found uh, virtuous Sita. That's the word that he uses. And then he tells where he found her. I found her across the southern seas in, in Lanka under Nayaka Initurati Ayamum Pandula Tuyarum. So don't be worrying anymore about Sita. She is alive and she, is, uh, she continues to be virtuous and there is nothing to worry. It's exactly what Anuman told Rama. So uh, the question now raised by Sita is very pertinent and, and, and the right question to ask. Uh, Rama when he is being so horrible to her. So if Rama doubted Sita, then it also implies that he did not trust in Anuman's words. And this is quite shocking. 
Sita could not believe that Rama would doubt Anuman. But Rama had no answer for her. So Sita went on to say, Yettavam yennalam yenna karputtan Ittanai kalamu mudandu Eediyalam pitta yenalai Avam pidaitthadamanre Uttama ni manattu unartilamayal Of what use is my penance? Of what use is my virtue? If you think me worthless There is no point in my holding on to life Adalin purattini yarukkaga Yen kodaru tavattinai kuri kattu ven She called Ilakkuvan She summoned Ilakkuvan And she ordered him to create a pyre. Ilakkuvan was in the periphery of the scene. Standing right next to her was Anuman, Angadan, Sugrivan, Vidanan. She ignored all of them and she called Ilakkuvan to light a pyre. And she said, Ilayavan thanai alaitthu idudhi thiyana valayoli mun kaiyal vayil kurina. She gave him a verbal order to create a pyre. Needless to say, Ilakkuvan was devastated that this was happening. He didn't understand what was happening. He was puzzled. He was shocked by Rama's words. He was shocked that Rama was allowing all this to happen. He wordlessly looked at Rama. Sita ordered him with her words to light the pyre, but he wordlessly looked at Rama, seeking an answer. And Kamban says, Rama wordlessly answered with the expression in his eyes. He indicated that he was not angry anymore, that this was a charade, that he was play-acting. Ulaiburu Manatavan, Ulagam Yavukum, Kalaiganai Thoda, and Kandin Kurina. Ulaiburu Manatavan means a one bearing grief in his heart. So Ilakuan, with grief in his heart, bowed down to Rama, and Rama, Anuman uh, Kamban chooses to characterize Rama as Kalaikan. Kalaikan means yardstick. Rama is the yardstick against which the best in the world is measured. So Rama replied, wordlessly and indicated by his by the look in his eye that this is just a charade the look in his eye tells ilakkuvan that this is all play acting i am not serious about this can i say something i mean you said that um, she was seeking ilakkuvan of all the people who was actually not in the scene um, and she was looking for uh, ilakkuvan and then she's asking ilakkuvan to set the fire but is it not natural because of all the people who are standing there um, apart from Rama, the closest person she knows is Ilakun, and uh, she always she probably feels that um, she's able to ask him to do that, and that that he would do that. I agree. I agree with you. It, 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 that's uh, that's a logical thought. But there is another version to this, which I'll talk about in a bit. Now, there is another subtle beauty to this moment. Ilakun could have asked Rama, "Why are you doing this?" But if he had asked Rama, there would have been a discussion which would have involved Sita's chastity. And that would have hurt her even more. So Ilakkuvan was, uh, spoke with his eyes. Rama answered with his eyes. This is a sign of uh, good breeding. This is a sign of good upbringing. Now, uh, Ilakkuvan with a heavy heart created the pyre. Sita entered the flames. The moment she entered the flames, the fire was doused. And Agni, the god of fire came rushing out, bearing Sita in his arms. Sita was unscathed by the fire. Kamban says not even the flowers in her hair were singed by the flames. Agni set her down and ran to Rama. And he said, Rama, why are you punishing me? What have I done to you? You sent her into the fire and she is burning me up. So pure is her chastity that she is burning me up. Rama got very angry. Rama said, who are you? And why are you here to speak for this worthless one? He used the word punmayal, which means worthless one. Now, it was Agni's turn to get angry. He said, Rama, I am the one who stands witness for all that is good and bad in the world. For any auspicious occasion or for any sad occasion, I am the witness. Yet, you don't trust me? And you don't trust somebody like Anuman? What kind of person are you, Rama? Where did you learn to think like this? And he says, If you hurt Sita, Peyume marai, Puvi pilappadu andriye seyume porai, Aram neriyil sellume, Uyume ulagu, Ival unarvu sirinal, Vayumeel malar misai, Ayanum mayume. Rama, if Sita gets angry, 
this world will be destroyed brahma himself will be destroyed when agni bhagavan said this rama accepted his words he said now i will take sita back and i will live with her because i trust your words we have narrated to you sita's agni parichay as it happened but i think several questions remain the first question is why was rama angry with her the moment he saw her probably because sita was decked out like a queen he was expecting to see a tavasi a woman who had done penance but here was sita wearing uh, rich clothes and jewelry rama did not expect this for the last 10 months he had been pining for her and he was in dire straits but this was not sita's fault rama was not aware that it was vidanan's misunderstanding that made this happen so rama as soon as he saw her was furious and he burst out with very very harsh words there is a tirukural which says gunamennum kundreri nindran veguli ganameyum kaattal aridu you must fear the anger of virtuous people their anger will last only for a moment but yet that anger is to be feared so rama for a moment he was angry and he burst out with that anger but then that anger went away like all virtuous people his anger went away by the time ilakuvan came to the scene rama indicated to him by the look in his eye that he was play acting rama was not angry anymore at that time so we come to the next question why did rama allow sita to go through the agni parichay probably because rama knew that sita was virtuous i don't think there's any question that rama had any doubts about her chastity in his mind he knew she was virtuous and he knew that her chastity would burn fire itself he knew that she would not be harmed by the fire that's probably why he let the agni parichay proceed but why did he subject her to that indignity the uh, exponents of kamba ramayana have come up with an explanation which i don't think we find that explanation plausible but anyway i will tell you what that explanation is they say that sita was trying to atone for her sins you see when rama went in search of the golden deer uh, it was actually marichan the demon the asura so as rama killed the golden deer the deer transformed into marichan and as a last act of deception Marichan cried out Ilakkuvan's name and Sita's name in Rama's voice. When Sita heard Rama's voice crying out in desperation, she thought Rama was wounded. She begged Ilakkuvan to go and rescue Rama. Ilakkuvan refused. He said Rama cannot be hurt. There was an argument, a heated argument, and uh, in the end when Ilakkuvan did not budge, Sita lost her temper and she said to him Nindra nin nila idu neriyattru andru you are staying here because you are not going to help rama because your intentions are wrong your intentions towards me are wrong now this was unforgivable ilakkuvan was like a son to sita he loved her like a like a mother and uh, not only that she said to ilakkuvan i am going to jump into the forest fire and kill myself ilakkuvan immediately left sita unguarded in uh, the forest and went in search of rama ravana came and abducted sita and for the 10 months that she was in ravana's captivity she regretted these words she said that this had happened because she hurt ilakkuvan she did penance to atone for these words and a lot of people say that this agni parichay was also an attempt by sita to atone for her sins and uh, for for the sin she committed by uttering these harsh words to ilakkuvan but there's another twist here ilakkuvan never told rama sita about sita's harsh words when ilakkuvan found rama in the forest uh, after he had killed maricha rama said why have you come here why have you left sita unguarded and ilakkuvan said she was very upset and so i had to come in search of you but Rama guessed that if Ilakkuvan had disobeyed his orders if Ilakkuvan had disobeyed Rama's own orders there must be a good reason for it Rama guessed that Sita must have said something like this and 
the uh, exponents of the Ramayana says that at this point Rama also played along with Sita's intention to continue with the Agni Parichai as an atonement for her sins to Ilakkuan. I think that um, sounds like a very complicated explanation for Rama's actions. I think uh, the, the simplest reason is probably the best in my mind. Um, I think Rama didn't want to say that uh, Sita is pure himself. So he wanted Agni to say that. He wanted uh, the others to say that. And she wanted her to demonstrate it. And he very well would have known that she would come through this uh, paricha without any problem. I think that's probably a, a simple and a nicer explanation for this rather than to say that uh, Sita regretted what she did and this, is, this was a punishment uh, or uh, this was a punishment that she was uh, going through uh, for having been quite nasty to Lakshman. I, I tend to agree with you because uh, as a woman, I'm sure a lot of you who are listening to this, you are uh, married and you are wives. If a husband says these words to a wife, she will not tolerate it. If a husband speaks to a wife, a virtuous wife as harshly as Rama spoke to Sita, the marriage will end at that point. But Sita's marriage did not end. She lived quite happily with Rama for many years. She bore him children and she had no angst in her heart against Rama. This was probably because she realized that Rama was doing what he had to do. You see, Kamban refers to Rama as Kalekan, the yardstick against which goodness is measured. The yardstick must always be longer than the thing against which it is measured. So Rama had to lead a blameless life. I don't think anybody in their right mind would doubt Sita's chastity. Those who have been students of the Ramayana uh, through the ages, uh, who have understood the story, nobody will have this doubt in their mind. But because Sita was Rama's wife, because Rama had to be blameless, Sita also had to be blemishless. And it is not enough if Rama says that Sita is pure, like you said, Rama is her husband. It is not enough if Anuman says that Sita is pure. Anuman loves her like a, like a son. Sita loves him like a mother. So there, their opinion is biased. You cannot give a conduct certificate for your child. Your school has to give the certificate. Similarly, a third party had to give a conduct certificate for Sita and that was Agni Bhagavan. That this seems to be the most uh, reasonable explanation that uh, we can come up with. Uh, for following this, uh, Brahma and Shiva actually appear before Rama, and Dasaratha himself, his father himself, appeared before Rama, and all of them assured him of Sita's purity. And Brahma now, for the first time, announced to him he was indeed the reincarnation of Lord Vishnu, and Sita was none other than Goddess Lakshmi. So they also played their part in reuniting Rama and Sita. And uh, after the Agni Parichai, Sita happily went with Rama back to Ayodhya in the Pushpaka Vimanam. On the way, Rama showed her all the, all the uh, places that he had uh, been to uh, on his way to Lanka. And they uh, first paid a visit to the sage Bharadwaja in his hermitage before going to Ayodhya. The other major focus of the Michi Paralam is on Bharadan. I said that... Um, Bharadan was another person who was rescued in the Michi Paralam. Now earlier on, when Dasarada comes to meet Rama, Rama asks him for a boon. He requests Dasarada to reinstate Kaikeyi as his mother and Bharadan as his brother. Dasarada had disowned both of them after Kaikeyi demanded Rama's banishment. Rama said to Dasarada, Tayum, Tambiyum, Aam ena varam tarhe. So he asked both his mother the stepmother and uh, the stepbrother to be reinstated to their or original position. After Kaikeyi's demands to make Bharata the king of Ayodhya, uh, Dasarada was devastated and he had cursed that um, Kaikeyi is uh, no longer his wife and Bharata is no longer his son. Ival in Taramallal Turandain, Manne Avan Varum Bharadan Danayum Mahan Enru Unnain. Bharadan was actually a star in Ramayana, even though many people uh, didn't know much about Bharadan. He was, uh, Kamban showed him as a star in Ramayana from the beginning itself. He loved Rama to the exclusion of everyone else. When he was forced to leave Rama in the forest and return to Ayodhya to rule in his name, he made a solemn vow before Rama that he would kill himself if Rama did not come back 
and claim his throne in, after completion of the 14 years in the forest. Bharadhan actually lived a life of a monk in a small village on the outskirts of Ayodhya and performed hard penance just like Rama in the forest. At the end of 14 years, Rama did not arrive because Rama was busy uh, visiting some of uh, the uh, sages before returning back. And, um, and, and Bharada thought that Rama is not coming back. So Bharada now, um, true to his words, made preparation to kill himself in the fire. So he called his brother Satrugna now to his presence and strangely asked him for a boon. He addressed his younger brother uh, very respectfully as Parudhiyil Vaimayinai, the one who is blameless because of his adherence to truth. Shatrughnan realized that there was something wrong here and he cautiously asked him what boon he wanted for him. And Bharadhan said, I'm going to kill myself to keep up my word to Rama. And I told Rama that I will kill myself if he did not return in 14 years. So I want you to promise me that you will rule the kingdom of Ayodhya. Shatrughnan was shocked. Shatrughnan could not accept this actually. I mean, he was being a little sarcastic to, um, to his brother Bharadhan. He said, one of my brother went to the forest to keep his promise to his father and another brother went with him to guard him in the forest and now another one of my brother who is with me wants to kill himself to keep up his word. Who do you think I am? I am I'm not shameless that uh, I will want to take over this kingdom and rule this kingdom. He says, I do not want any of that and I do not want to be the emperor of Ayodhya at all. So he refused to do that. He said, Kanala nilamahale kaivittu ponanai kaattu pinbu ponanum uru thambi ponavandhan varum avadi poetry enna anada eripuha enra amaivanum uru thambi Ayale nanadi yama ivarasalvain enne ivarasachi enide amma. So he says, I am not a shameful person to take on the responsibility of ruling uh, this, uh, this kingdom. So don't ask me to do that. But Bharadhan insisted and finally with a heavy heart, Shatrughnan proceeds to make a pyre. Now, Kosala hears this. Kosala is Rama's mother and, um, and it's always been described that uh, Kosala treated all of the four sons equally, even from the beginning. And uh, she, she comes rushing to Bharadhan and begs him not to enter the fire. She says, even if a crow Rama would turn up, they would not be equivalent to you single Bharata, she said. Uh, you are you're equivalent to a crow Ramas. Yenil kodi ramarhal yeninum, annal nin aruluk aruga avaro, punniyam yenum ninu yer poyinal, mannum vanum virhalum varumo. Kosale loved Bharata like her own son, and she's exhibited this on many occasions. And in fact, she loved all of her sons equally. And now she is even going as far as implying that Bharata is superior to Rama. Now, meanwhile, uh, Rama recalls uh, the promise that um, uh, he has made to Bharata to return in 14 years. And um, he immediately sends Anuman as his messenger to convey to Bharata uh, of uh, Rama's victory and him uh, returning back. And Anuman actually rushes to Ayodhya and uh, discovers that Bharata is now going to enter the fire. Anuman puts out the fire with his hands and chants, Ayyan Vandan. Aryan Vandan, he said, Rama is coming. And Bharata hears this and, and he is delighted. He is really dancing around um, saying, that it's such a wonderful news that um, Rama is coming back. Finally, um, everyone goes um, to the shores of Ganges um, to receive Rama there. And when Rama arrives, um, there is a tearful reunion. But most touching of all is a reunion between Bharata and Ilakuan. Uh, there is a little um, um, a story here, uh, the relationship between Bharata and Lakwan. We have always said all the brothers loved each other. Um, we, everybody knows that Rama is very close to Lakwan and Rama and, and Lakwan are always together. Similarly, Bharata and Shatrughnan are very close to each other, even though they have different mothers. But the relationship between Lakwan and Bharata has not always been smooth before. 
because Ilakuan has actually insulted Bharatan on a couple of occasions. And the first time this happened was when uh, Bharata was announced as a king and um, Ilakuan on hearing this news that um, uh, Rama's throne is uh, handed over to Bharata, he says, Singa kurulaiku idam teenjuvai unai nayin vengan siru kuttanai utta virimpinale. So he says that um, uh, Bharatan's mother, Kaikei, tried to feed the food which was meant for a lion to a dog. She is throwing the food which is meant for a lion. She describes um, uh, Rama as a lion and um, Bharata as a dog. Um, so that's how, I mean, and he's laughing at this prospect of Bharata becoming the king of um, Ayodhya. Uh, that was one occasion where he really insults Bharata. And on the second occasion, Bharata is um, coming to request Rama to come back to Ayodhya. He thinks that Bharata has come to fight. And uh, once again, he tells Rama that I'll kill, I'll kill him. He has come, um, come to wage war at us. And uh, he mistakes Bharata uh, the second time around as well. When the two brothers now meet once again, I think uh, now Vilakuan knows how pure Bharadan was and he looks at him um, and both of them are very worn out. Um, Ilakuan has been in the forest for 14 years guarding Rama and he did not sleep one night. He must look extremely exhausted. And uh, similarly, uh, Bharadan has also not been eating well and uh, he's been really ruling the kingdom. Uh, with uh, Rama's uh, Padugas and uh, he also looked extremely worn out and when the two of them see each other, they hug each other, Kamban describes the scene and asks the question, which of the, which of the two brothers looks more worn out? Uduru Kamala Kannir Tisaidorum Sibiri Oda Tal Todu Tadakkai Ara Tharuvinan Tanimai Nengi Kaduraindu Ulainda Meyyo Kayyaru Kavalai Kura is it Ilakuan who spent 14 years in the forest guarding Rama without sleeping for a moment or is it Bharatan who spent 14 years living a life of piety ruling in the name of Rama who is lean of the two? Kamban does not have an answer to this question because this really isn't a question at all. Finally, Rama is crowned the king of Ayodhya and here is um, the famous song that describes the crowning. I think this is um, a very aus auspicious um, a verse that many people use um, on many occasions. Ariyanai Anumantanga, Angadan Uday Valenda, Bharadan Ven Kudai Kavika, Iruvarum Kavari Patra, Virisari Kurali Wonga, Vennayur Sarayan Tangal Marabulor Kodukka Vangi Vasitane Punaindan Mauli. Rama's crown king with Sita by his side and Bharada as his crown prince. Anuman is bearing the throne and Ilakuan and Shatrugnan are waving the kavari or the fan. But here Kamban pays tribute to his uh, patron Venayanallur Sadayappa Vallal. It was Sadayappa Vallal who actually supported him through to write the whole of Ramayana. So he actually says that uh, Sadayappa Vallal's ancestors were present at the time of um, Rama's coronation. And he says they were wealthy even at that time and they gave the crown to Vashishta, the sage Vashishta and Vashishta then puts the crown on Rama's head. So it was Vashishta who crowns Rama and the crown was made by Shadaipa Vallal's ancestors. So he, he pays a huge tribute to the person who supported him to write uh, Ramayana. Following this coronation, Rama bids goodbye to his allies and friends and gives them expensive gifts. But for Anuman, he had a very special gift. He did not give him any material gift. Anuman saved Rama countless times. He saved Rama by uh, finding Sita and the Ashokavanam. He saved Rama by giving life to Ilakkuvan twice by bringing the Sanjeevani mountain. He saved Rama by preventing Bharadan's suicide in the very end. So, Rama says to him, Andra say the Udavikku, Yaan say sayal piridu illai, Paimpoon, Poor Udaviya Tintolai, Porundura Pulluga. But most of all, Rama knew that Anuman loved him. So, he paid him back with kind. He said to Anuman, 
the role that you have played has been invaluable. There is nothing I can give you that will equal what you have done. So I am giving you what you value most of all. I am giving you my love. You can embrace me and you can hold me for however long and never let go. You see, when someone embraces, it is a sign of love. And this is the power of love. Rama, who is extolled as the one supreme God by Kamban, God is supposed to be Nirguna Parabrahman. According to the Vedas, God has no attribute. But here you see God being enslaved by the love of his devotee. He just wanted to be in Anuman's embrace. Rama understood the power of love like no one else. Rama freely gave love and received it. Rama even loved his enemies. He loved the world, the world loved him back. His love was reciproc reciprocated by his brothers, by Anuman, by Vedanan, by Sugrivan, by Guhan. They all lent their shoulders for Rama to stand on. And because of that, Rama stood tall. And I think most importantly, Rama may be the yardstick against whom we measure the greatest amongst us, but that is because Rama's love was all-inclusive. Rama loved people who belonged to another race. He loved the Vanara king Sugriva. He loved the Asura Vedanan. Rama's love knew no discrimination. He loved Guhan who was, an, who was a hunter like his own brother. So Rama's name lasts uh, to this day. Rama is venerated to this day not because he was a skilled warrior or a fair administrator, not because he was a master of the Vedas, but because his love was all-inclusive. We have come to the end of uh, Yudhagandam, and it's not just the end of Yudhagandam, but it's also the end of uh, Kambaramanam itself. Although many people see uh, Ramayanam as um, just about the fact that uh, Rama came as uh, the avatar of Vishnu, and he killed the evil Ravana. It's about the story of uh, good versus the evil. Ramayanam is much more than that. It's about the life and struggles of Rama, which is meant to be a lesson for us. Rama went through a lot of struggles in life. He went through some of the worst struggles a human could undergo. But he went through all of this and maintained very high standards. Even as a young man, he had very high standards and he was well educated. Um, one of the examples when he was a boy, Vishwamitra asked him to kill Tadaka, who was um, a woman. And Rama hesitated a lot to kill a woman. He said, I cannot kill a woman, even though in form she was a demon and she was so huge. So really his, he, was, he was well educated and his principles were right. When he was offered the throne of Ayodhya, uh, Kamban says that he was... Um, um, he was not overjoyed or he wasn't showing too much, too much emotions. And um, even better, when he was told that the throne is not his and the throne is going to be given to Bharata, he did not show any emotion at all. And Kamban describes uh, this um, in a very nice um, verse, in a very nice song. yarum <laughs> He says when he heard that um, he is not going to be the king of Ayodhya, his face looked like a, a, a lotus flower which has just opened up. I mean, it's not like, he says, it beat a lotus, the appearance beat the appearance of a lotus flower which just opened up. So... He actually showed uh, no big emotions to anything in terms of happiness or sadness. And he, and he led a life which was an example for all of us. Yes. Uh, in Sanskrit, Rama is referred to as Thita Pragnya. He dealt with uh, joy and sorrow the very same way. And that is supposed to be an ideal principle for us to imbibe. There's another aspect to Rama. He made a promise to Sita after he married her that he would not even think of another woman. Sidai told Anuman about this when Anuman came to see her in the Ashokavanam. Sidai said, Vandu yen karam patriya vaigalvai indai piravikka iru madarai sindayalum todain yendru sevvaram tandavarthai tiruchavi satruvai. 
This is actually very unusual for that time. Particularly the Kshatriyas had many, many wives. His father is meant to have had 60,000 wives. Rama loved only one woman and married only once and, and he dedicated his life to this single woman. And that is again meant to be a great lesson for us. We need to understand that um, Rama's life is not an ideal life. Rama was very unlucky throughout his life. He lost his kingdom. His father died of grief. He had, a, he had to deal with a stepmother and his wife was abducted by Asuras. Nobody would wish Rama's life for themselves. But we would wish to emulate the way in which he faced problems and situations as they presented to him. And in spite of all that, in spite of all of these troubles, whenever he met anyone, he showered love to everyone. He showed mercy even to Ravana when he lost all of his weapons during the first war. So the whole purpose of Ramayana is to help us deal with life in good times and bad times without being affected by them. And uh, this was one of the most important traits of Rama that we need to emulate. I think before uh, finishing, I would like to describe um, um, what I see as uh, Kamban's intention when he wrote Kamba Ramayana. I don't believe that um, Kamban wanted this to be seen purely as a religious text. I, I know that he refers to Rama in many places as um, the Supreme God, the one Supreme God. But uh, when he starts writing about Kamba Ramayana, um, he does uh, what we call um, Kadavul Varthi. And Kadavul Varthi is meant to be to praise uh, God before starting any work. And um, every chapter had a Kadavul Varthi. And I want to remind people of the first Kadavul Varthi that is there in Kamba Ramayana as well as the last Kadavul Varthi. Uh, we should perhaps um, talk about the last Kadavul Varthi and I find that extremely interesting. Vondre ennin vondre yam palaven ruraikin palave yam andre ennin andre yam ame ennin ame yam indre ennin indre yam uladen ruraikin ulade yam nandre nambi kudivarkai namakki ingi enno pireipu amma. When he says this, I mean he talks about God. He says, if you want to call him as a single person, as a single God, he says he's single for you. But when you want to call him many, or there are so many different forms of God, he tells people he is many. There is no doubt about this. And for people who don't believe also, he says, if you don't believe in him, he's not there. And if you believe in him, he's there for you. So I think he addresses really people of all faiths and all beliefs um, in this song. And he says it's important that we think about this the way we believe in it and lead a good normal life. And this is how he starts Yudha Gandam. This uh, Kadavul Varth, which we just talked about, the Kadavul Varth of the Yudha Gandam, demonstrates that Kamban was secular in his belief. And just like Rama, he was all inclusive. He did not exclude anybody of any religion. Now, uh, the, the tradition when you are reciting Ramayana is um, after completing Yudha Gandam, one must also read Balagandam once again. So I think I take this opportunity um, to go back to Balagandam and uh, really go back to Kadavul Varthi because we have uh, talked about um, uh, the, secular, the secular feelings of uh, Kamban. Uh, but nothing describes his secular feeling more than the first Kadavul Varthi. And I will say that, and I am a huge believer of uh, this Kadavul Varthi. Ulagam yavayum tamula vakkalum nilai baruttalum nikkalum nīngala alakila vilayat tudayar avar thalaivar annavar ke saran nangale. I actually used this Kadavul Varthi in one of my speeches um, in a meeting, and I, when I came off the stage, uh, one, one Islamic um, um, learned person came to me and was puzzled that um, I, he didn't know anything about Kamba Ramayana. And he asked me, which part of uh, Quran did you translate and write this up, he said. And, and that says it all about Kamban really. For, a, for an Islamic scholar to come and ask me, did you take this from Quran? I was very pleased when he asked me. I told him this is from Kamba Ramayana. And 
it it really doesn't talk about any any god he says uh, he he praises the god he says ulagam yavayum tamula vaakalum the god that created this earth nilai beruttalum neekalum the god who maintained this 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 universe and the god who destroys things and it is that god it is that god who is my master ulagam yavayum tamula vaakalum nilai beruttalum neekalum neengala alagila vilayattudaiyar and he just doesn't do this with a great deal of stress or strain he does it like a child's play all this creation maintenance and destruction is like a child's play for him and it is that god i believe in and he is my master and i submit to him entirely is what he starts off kambaramanam with and i think i finish this um, um this recitation or this explanation of kamba ramayanam with uh, how kamban started it and thank you very much for being patient and thank you very much for listening to us thank you